Welcome back to another episode of Wrestle Capsule, where you're going to be getting your weekly dose of pro wrestling talk. And I'm your host, B. So welcome back to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about last night, Friday Night Smackdown. Let's get into it. So um, let's talk about this whole Logan Paul thing. So he starts off Smackdown and I can tell that the people still are really not for Logan Paul as WWE would have hoped, even though he has shown amazing talent in the ring, this people still don't like Logan. They still call BS on him. They don't really care about him. So he comes out and I guess there was some sort of altercation. They call it an altercation, but it really was. Roman Reigns was on Logan Paul's podcast show, Impulsive, and there was some sort of like back and forth and Logan Paul running his mouth. And let me pull this up and I'll put it up on this screen so you guys can see the whole conversation between Roman Reigns and Logan Paul. But I didn't watch the podcast. I didn't really care to. I'm not a huge fan of Logan, even though he is, he's he's, he's good in the ring. He's not bad at all, but yeah. So Logan, on his Twitter, he was like, new impulsive podcast, Roman Reigns embarrasses Logan Paul, reveals John Cena beef and fighting The Rock. Watch or get body slammed. And then Roman replies to it and is like, I bless the world and bring the island of relevancy to your show. You and your boys acknowledge me. And as soon as I'm gone, you run your mouth. Wise man, AKA Paul Heyman, handle him. So I was like, okay. So then they refer to that in SmackDown and Paul Heyman comes out and he's, they're teasing this whole, um, I think they're doing today, if by the time I put up this video, it's already happened, but Saturday they were having their Crown Jewel press conference in Las Vegas. Nobody care about that pay-per-view. I know I don't. You guys let me know in the comments below. Do you even care about Crown Jewel? I am going to cover it. The only reason why I'm talking about it is because I'm a wrestling YouTuber and I have to talk about it. I can't ignore it. But I really do not care about Crown Jewel. Every time I think about Crown Jewel or I watch it, I get a weird feeling in my stomach. No joke. It gives me, it just gives me weird vibes. It just gives me weird feelings inside. So yeah, Logan Paul is challenging Roman Reigns, so they're gonna have a match at Crown Jewel. Heyman is trying to talk him out of it, talk him out of doing something stupid, and of course the bloodline that's out there. Sami Zayn steps in and he's like talking down the bloodline because they're about to get into it because Logan Paul's talking out of side of his neck. And <laughs> Sammy's like, no, I got this, y'all, I got this. And next thing you know, Logan Paul socks Sammy Zayn in the face. Like, the utter disrespect. And of course, Jay Uso's on <laughs> at ringside laughing. But then the bloodline go into the ring and then Logan Paul, you know, retreats. And then Ricochet comes out. So long story short, there's a match. The first match of the night was match between Ricochet and Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn did not win the match. Ricochet defeated Sami. Every match Ricochet is in, he makes it amazing. And you are, guys already know how much I love Sami Zayn. Like there's, there, there's no need for me to elaborate on that. But yeah, I feel like the only reason why this segment with Logan Paul, The Bloodline, and Paul Heyman was as good as it was, was because of Sammy and Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman will protect and defend Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, until his day is done or until his contract is up. But yeah, anyway, I, I'm not sold on Logan yet. Yo, but what I do want to talk about was there was a there was a little fight on ringside between Sami Zayn and Jey Uso. Sami is getting fed up with Jay not being on his side. And Jimmy had to step in and intervene because those two were about to go at it. He's like, no, this is not the time. This is not the time. We do not, this is not the time for the bloodline to bust at the seams. This is not time for Oos and honorary Oos to have issues. And then Braun Strowman freaks up the Maxim Mel models. 
because they were coming out, they're having their segment, and you know, we really don't care about the max and male models, we just don't. But as you know, Mace and Mansoor were out there modeling, doing their weird junk. Braun messed that up, came from behind them as they're in the entrance and just freaked both of them up. They're really trying to rehabilitate Braun <laughs> Strowman's career. They're really trying to bring his dominance back to WWE after him being released. But I mean, there, for me, there's no more convincing me. You don't gotta convince me anymore that Braun Strowman is dominant, that he's powerful, that he's a super powerhouse wrestler. Like y'all don't, yet, WWE don't need, need to do that for me. Like we know who he is. We know what he can do. We don't need all this him destroying uh, rest, current wrestling talent. Like I don't need that. I, I don't need that. I need him in a storyline. That's what I need. So the match between Bailey and Raquel Rodriguez. Now, this match makes sense, especially since last week, where it was Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez versus Damage Control, EO Sky and Dakota Kai, going at it for the Women's Tag Team Championships. And the Tag Team Championships went to EO and Dakota. And I guess Aaliyah got injured and Raquel's upset about it. So what is next but to have a match with Bailey? Because Bailey was trying to interfere regardless in the last. She, you know, you come on, they're healed. Damage control is a heel stable. So it makes sense for both of these two to have a match together on Friday night SmackDown. Overall, the match was good. I could definitely tell though that Bailey was carrying that match. Like she was Bailey was definitely carrying that match. But I'm 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 seeing that Raquel is getting better in the ring. And I loved seeing her take on, even though she did lose, Bailey did pick up the win for this match. Even so, I loved seeing Raquel Rodriguez show her dominance where she was taking on both EO Sky and Dakota Kai because you know those two were going to try to interfere in the match. Of course, why wouldn't they? They're come on, they're damage control. You want an extreme rules match with me. <laughs> it's your funeral. So before I get into talking about this North American championship match between current champion Solo Sokoa versus Mad Cat Moss, let us talk about that backstage situation with the bloodline. So before Solo goes out to have his match with Mad Cat Moss for the North American Championship, the Bloodline's ready to go out with him. And Solo was like, no Usos. No, 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 no. No Jim, no Jay. Come on, Sammy. Because he was talking about how they had disappointed him. They're off their, they're, they're off their game. And he picked Sammy Zayn over the Usos to go out with him to be support for his match against Mad Cat Moss. And I was like, if this doesn't add more fuel to the fire for J2 hate Sami Zayn, I don't know what will. Like your own brother, your own flesh and blood picked someone else over you to go out to support him in his championship match. Like, this this faction slowly but surely is falling at the blessing at the seams and falling into pieces slowly but surely and I am loving it. He better win. This is what I was saying at the time. <laughs> Moving forward to the actual North American Championship match between Mad Cat Moss and Solo Sokoa. That match was so good. Mad Cat Moss is so good. I'm so glad. I know this was a long time ago. I remember he was kind of like a sidekick to Happy Corbin when Happy Corbin came back as Happy Corbin after being poor or whatever. And he got that jackpot and all that other stupid stuff. But yeah. I'm so glad that he's not even doing that anymore. He's by himself doing his own thing because he is so freaking good this match there was so many close calls i thought that he was gonna lose and sammy was at in his corner and i was like oh my gosh like this would be the worst time for solo to lose this would be the worst the, this would be the worst thing for sammy for him to lose on his watch and sammy Zayn was actually in able to interfere and be a really good distraction for solo to defend and retain his North American championship. So 
Sammy being in Solo's corner and Solo actually retaining his title against Mad Cat Moss just solidified his role in the bloodline, whether Jey Uso wants to admit it or not. He is so important and so vital. And I wonder if Jay will ever really realize how important Sammy is to the whole faction. Oh my gosh, this fatal four way for the number one contenders match. I knew that this was gonna have to happen again because last time they had it, Braun Strowman, I think this was on Raw when it happened. Braun Strowman just ruined the whole fatal four way for the number one contender for the tag team championship match against the Usos. Like, so they had to have theirs on SmackDown and oh my gosh, it was so good. Ugh, you guys already know how much I love tag team matches. It's, it's my favorite match, it's my favorite type of match. So it was the New Day, so Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus the Brawling Brutes. Pete Dunne, Rich Holland, versus Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci, and Hit Rose Top Dollar and Ashanti D. Adonis. So all four of these tag teams were in this fatal four way for the number one contender spot. There was a point in time where Pete Dunne was just going through every single person like he was on a freaking roll i loved him he was just hot pop you know guys i always say this it was going off on all cylinders it's like my favorite phrase on the show but it was true i actually thought that imperium was going to win this fatal four-way match and then you even see top dollar like showing his strength that was incredible when he had xavier woods kofi kingston and Pete Dunne, he was carrying all three of these men in the ring and walking around like I was going off. I was like, just you better show your skills. And he threw some of them back and some of them forward. I went off, I was like, yes. The more the, this team, and I'm talking about Hit Row by the way, the more this team is, is working and in the ring with other wrestlers who are more experienced and just keep working at it, they're gonna get better and better. I told you this. I knew this was gonna happen. Under Triple H, come on. Like he's not gonna bring on any booty people. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about Amos. The Brawling Brutes won the Fatal 4-Way. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Friday Night Smackdown. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Signing off, bye.